So, my dear ones, welcome into December. Can you believe it? It's December already? Yes, you can, because you're already engaged in the busyment of the embodiment that entails around all of that. I know it. But what you may not realize is that today is a very important day for all of us. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Now, don't get all excited. I'm not talking about a Christian feast or a specialized religious event that occurs only for a few on this plane. Advent is a universal term and a universal understanding, and we embrace it. Advent simply is a word from a Latin root that means come, come. Advent time is a time of invitation. It's a time of being called to a deeper sense of ourselves, to more mindfulness and to a willingness to draw aside and ponder the path of life that we are upon and see where we are on it. And if it is everything we wish it to be, and if not, to, to fix and adjust and make decisions around that so that we can happily go forward and be in process with the advancement always of life going forward by means of each one of us. So Advent is an opportunity simply to be more of ourselves and more present to ourselves and be the best of ourselves. It also comes from the Greek root of the word um, parousia or parousia, however you wish to um, call it. But all it means is, hey, listen in. Great things are ahead. Something wonderful is about to happen. You could be part of it, consciously aware. You could help it along. You really could. The message and the tone of Advent is a new dawn is about to break. God is about to enter into time and space and this world in a new and different way that creates a better world a more wondrous world, a world of more light and more life and more love, a new era. That's the message of this time of year in Western culture and society and beyond. That is the message. And the question is, are you going to be part of it? Or are we just going to skip that wonderful opportunity of Advent with its opportunity to draw aside, pay attention, listen in, ponder, see how we're doing with ourselves and go straight to Christmas Mary or Hanukkah Mary or you know whatever Mary it is we're celebrating at this time. Because there's no bypassing this for the truth student, for the soul that's spiritually unfolding and maturing. This is a time when you and I love it and we embrace it and we delight in the opportunity to do it. Yes, amidst all of the shopping, amidst all of the cramming of the malls and the surfing of the internet, amidst all of the decorating and all of the parties and all of the gatherings and all of the get. Yes, amidst all of that, believe it or not, you and I are invited to draw a side to come higher, to go into that beautiful inner, inner chamber that is vast and huge and, and enormous and indescribable and unlimited, wherein we find the true essence of our being. So our path, our path is a spiritual path and we're always on it. In the beginning, the followers of Jesus were known as the disciples or the followers of the way, the Tao, the way, the path. That's what they were known as. They were not Christians. They never were Christians. Jesus wasn't a Christian and he didn't have Christians around him either. Christianity came through St. Paul, but that's a different topic for another time. So the whole idea is where are you on your way? Where are you on your path? Go to the dictionary, look up path, and it says a, a, a beaten, a trodden path made by feet, the feet of humans and the feet of animals. It also says it is, it is a root, it is um, a course, it is that which upon something moves something moves. It also says it is a course of action. It is character. It is a procedure, like, for example, the path of righteousness and so on. 
Love to look up these things. It's a beautiful way of getting deeper into what everything means. But what we're getting deeper into now is what you mean, what I mean, who you are, uh, what I am, what all of life is, and what it's all about. Now, here's the thing about this journey in Advent. And its color, by the way, is the royal purple. The royal purple is its color. But it's in Advent, it's the color also of deeper mindfulness and the seriousness of embracing the decision to go deeper and to be more mindful. And as we do that, what happens is, guess where you end up in, in this journey? You end up at the beautiful, wonderful wilderness area that says, welcome, do please step in. Be prepared for anything that might happen and be okay with it. Now, it's a wilderness experience, because once you and I become mindful, we're going to arrive at the wilderness. There's no doubt about it. What is the wilderness? It is spiritual gym. That's what it is. It's the spiritual gym that you and I find ourselves in. You could call it spiritual boot camp, or whatever else it is you want to call it. I like to call it a, a spiritual gym, because I like going to the gym. I get benefit from going to the gym. Um, it feels good when I leave the gym. And so I see the wilderness experience in our lives as a spiritual gym. So in you go, and then, oh my goodness me, talking about not scary farm, when you go there on Halloween and you take some of the young ones, this could be equally called, you know, spiritual scary gym. But the difference is, when we're in it, you and I are not scared. We are not afraid. We move through it fearlessly, because we know that all it is is a whole big set of illusions, and you and I are moving through these illusions, looking into them, deciphering and seeing, is this real, isn't it real? Knowing it's not, we let it go. We relax, we release, and we let it go. So it's just like not scary farm. We know all the scaredy stuff is not real. It's just not real. And so, but we're willing to look at it. We're willing to look at it. It's because Advent is a time when you see your mistakes and when you see uh, that you're ready now to correct your wrongs. You really are. You want to get this straight and say, enough already, you know? This isn't working for me. What I'm thinking, saying, feeling, and doing is not working for me, so I'm ready for a change. And I'm open to the divine guidance with regard to this change. And the songs of Advent are all glorious. They're all glorious. They're talking about come higher. They're talking about, you know, blessed are those, you know, who bear good news and whose feet are, are, are straight upon the mountain and so on and so forth. The hymn of Advent, of course, today will be sung all over the place, is come, O come, Emmanuel. What's Emmanuel? It is God. God with us, but not just with us, but in us and as us. So come, God, in us, with us, as us. And ransom captive Israel. Everywhere you find Israel, put your own name in there. Captive Israel. Captive, <laughs> captured in all of my illusions, etc. All of my sense of sensibility of not being whatever, however, when I feel I ought to because look at them over there and how well they're doing, and they don't have as much going for them as I have, etc. And so uh, Rapture, then it's talking about bring us back, bring us back, take us back from this enslavement, from this sense of being outcast. Uh, and, and you hear a lot in, in spiritual stories about the feeling of being cast out into the darkness. Well, all that means is forgetting your connection with your source. And when we forget our connection with our source, it's like being in the dark. And we are the ones that cast ourselves out. Nobody else does. Nobody else has the power to. Isn't that wonderful to know? And ransom, ransom us, you know, the thing is to bring us back, do what it takes, buy us back, for God's sakes, help me to release myself from all this nonsense that I've been entertaining that is keeping me stopped and blocked. All of this happens in the wilderness, and you get to look at every bit and piece of all of that, whatever that is, and to do it without judgment, to do it without judgment. The song of the Christian understanding of Advent is, O come, Emmanuel, 
and lift us up out of our sorrows, our sadness and miseries. I also like the song of Advent that comes from um, the mystic, um, the beautiful Sufi mystic Rumi. And he says, come, whoever you are, come, come. And he says, come, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. It doesn't matter, come. Ours is not a caravan, a journey, a caravan of despair. Come, even though you have broken your vow a thousand times, come. It doesn't matter. Come yet again, come, come. Come to what? Well, they're all saying the very same thing, regardless of whether it's a philosophy or religion or a, some kind of um, a teaching. They're all saying the same thing. Come higher. Come to the springs of living water, which are the springs of pure consciousness. Come to the mountain of the Lord, which is the law. Come to the mountain of greater consciousness. Come to the banquet table of heaven, to its fullness and its plenty. Come to what is yours. Own it. Claim it. Come. But you've got to come. You can't sit at home thinking, I must go. One of these days I'll go. I know it's nice. I know they tell me. Yeah, well, not just now, maybe later. And yet the whole thing in Advent is come. You have the invitation. Come, use it. And see how wondrous the wilderness experience is going to be on your way through and out of all of the stuff of the exterior world that we have managed to collect as baggage. Come. Here's the place where you can release it and relieve it because within the wilderness, there's all kinds of beautiful terrain. They're the pools of consciousness into which we, each one of us can look and do our work by so doing. And the work is always the same thing, relaxing, releasing, and letting go of the nonsense the ignorance and the illusions that we have so entertained and come to believe about ourselves, others, and everything else. Oh boy, do we think we know things when we know very little of anything. And if we know so little about ourselves, how can we know so much about each other? I mean, really, it makes no sense at all. But this thing of Advent is a super wonderful opportunity for you and for me to be all that we can be. And how do we make our Advent journey? We do it by being that more mindful self. How does that show up? I am kinder. I am more generous. I am more aware. I am less touchy. I, I take things less personally. I, 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 I just don't let the nonsense get to me. I'm unmoved by whatever it is that's coming at me from outside of myself. Because it means nothing unless I make it into something. Unless I put an interpretation onto it, it means no thing. It cannot come near me. It cannot become part of me. It cannot upset me in any way unless I allow it to, and I will allow it to if I am disconnected, if I am separated from the true essence of my being, from my truth, from my own radiant magnificence, which is mine because of the incarnation of spirit, spirit choosing to take up its residence, not just by means of me, but as me. Ask me. Now, how could somebody in whom spirit has taken up residence and become itself in form create so much havoc? Cause so much unrest? Create so much separation? Cause so much disruption? Be the creator of sadness and sorrow and hurt and pain within the self and outside of the small self. How could that be? 
And yet, and yet, it's the reality that we've created for ourselves that we think we live in. It's because we just have forgotten. It's because we haven't given ourselves the time to remember, but we forgot to remember. You see? So if I forget who I am, I'm going to forget who you are. And it's going to affect you. And not nicely. So Advent is about remembering who you are. You are the hands of God, the eyes of God, the ears of God, the mouth of God, the mouth of God, God help us all. The <laughs> mouth of God, the body of God. Well, now, isn't that a joke? The comedians would say it's a joke. And yet that's the truth. That is the truth, that the radiant magnificence of life itself is in resident in you and in me, but not just in this little tiny body. It's all around me and about me. It is what called my auric field. It's my auric field, and it goes far. But some days you know it in yourself and of myself, that shrinks down to very close to the bone. And that's when we have to breathe, release, relax, and let go and let it fill up again. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's just that we have contracted ourselves in all that negation that we enter into. And all the worry and all the concern and all the fretting. Here where men sit and hear each other moan, said the poet. Life is too much with us, getting and soon spending and all of that. Uh, it's just too much. It's too much for mortal mind to contend with. But we're not mortal mind. What is our vision and mission? Our vision is the awakening of ourselves to our spiritual magnificence and the awakening of all else besides. That's the vision of our organization. Well, this is the time, Advent, to help us to do that. So. What is the practical outcome of this? I would ask us all, maybe, just maybe, somewhere in the week, it's 21 days now to Christmas Eve, so we have 21 days to be this amazing self that we are. Do things that remind you of who you are, whatever that is. Maybe wear a bit of purple or something one day and say, today I'm going to be my purple self. I'm going to be Emmanuel, God with us. I'm going to be that in expression out in the world. I'm going to serve the world by allowing myself to be who I am and what I am because I know whose I am. I'm going to be in sacred service however I can be in sacred service. And a lot of the time that might be by shutting my mouth and keeping it closed. That could be the best service I could present or do or give sometimes. It really, really is. However your intuitive intelligence moves you to be in any given situation, that's the way you serve. That's the way I serve. It's not just standing behind the kitchen and serving people food, it's not just that. It is that and more. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I may be in physical service, but who am I while I'm being in physical service? Am I grumpy? Am I crabby? Am I doing it frustratedly because I, I have this to do and that to do and this, and I don't know how I can get it all done. So yeah, here's your stuff now. Go quickly. I want to get out of here. <laughs> I mean, there are days when everybody feels like that if everybody's being honest, you know. Oh, do I have to? Do I have to? Do I have to? No, you don't and I don't either. There's nothing we have to do. But we're invited to be all that we can be. Why? Because the glory of God has entered into you. It shines all around and all about you. You are lifted up. You are endowed. You're the entitlers to the kingdom of all good, the kingdom of heaven. And this is why you're here. You are here and I am here 
to buoyant up our spiritual legacy. It's not just about the great physical legacy that we're going to leave when we leave this world, whether it's to our children or to some great fund or some great organization, library or hospital or whatever else. The way we do that is to gather and gather and gather and gather and gather so that we can give. But for our spiritual legacy, the way we gather it is to give and 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 give so that when the time comes we receive see the difference physical human legacies are given because we've gathered spiritual legacies are received because we've given and that's what this season is all about and i am talking to the choir you have been so beautifully giving in the way you've taken care of our families and in so many other ways i'm extremely grateful the center is extremely grateful to you all so appreciate all of that so simply in in you know to pull it all together all that we are asked today to do is to be who we are and what we are and and remember whose we are and to go out into this world knowing something great wants to break through and birth itself and God wants to come through and this time in this space in this world in a new and glorious way that creates the new era but the only way it's going to happen is if that happens by allowing the divine to come through exactly as you are remember it doesn't matter how many thousands and thousands of times you have broken your vow it doesn't matter it's what do you want now how do you want to be now what do you have to give now how will you present now to the world that so needs you now and I know it's going to be the most magnificent Christmas time, holiday time ever, because you and I are going to unite now to be all that we can be in the glory of the light that fills us, in the love of the Spirit that absolutely saturates us, and in the divine service of the Spirit that always gives. That's you, and so it is.